All right, guys, so I wanted to do this video talking about adversity. And that's one of those things that's going to crop up for all of us at some point. You know, nobody gets far in the lifting game or it could even be set in life without facing a lot of adversity. And so I look back on the, what is it, 17, um, 18 years of training that I've put in. And, you know, I, I started doing, even before then, really, I started doing core and bench work at like age 12 and then started seriously lifting at age 14. Now I'm 32 years old and there were a lot of injuries. There were a lot of setbacks. That's all part of the game. So, you know, as a coach, you know, coaching a bunch of lifters and training people in person, injuries are a part of the game. I face them. You're going to face them. Everyone faces them. There's no getting around them. You could have the smartest, most methodical approach to your training, and you'll still face injuries at some point. They are inevitable. They are a part of the game. As careful as you want to be, they're going to happen. That's one of the things that's going to come up. So we can't let them destroy us. We can't let them get into our heads mentally and give up. You know, I've seen so many lifters get pretty dang strong, get to what would be an elite everyday level, and then they flame out. They're gone. They can't stick with the grind. Lifting is a grind. It's a consistency. It's all consistency. Day in and day out approaching, you know, your lifts, your goal, that's what's going to get you far. Just one day at a time. That mindset. Somebody uh, commented in the last video, the 365-day mindset. I once made a video about that. That's what it all comes down to. The 365-day mindset. How far are you going to get by stacking days, stacking wins, day to day over the course of a year? You'll get pretty dang far. So you have to look at it like this stuff is a part of the game. And I relate this to my own story where my right tibia, so my right ankle, I have had a stress fracture since around Halloween. So I did the half marathon on November 11th. It wasn't that bad then, but it was there. And then I, uh, I kept running 50 mile weeks and a lot of hills and stuff going downhill, the impact, and it kept getting worse. And I took three and a half weeks and I devoted it to the elliptical training with the hypoxico mask, simulating altitude, 10,000 feet. I came back, did some runs. It was, still wasn't right. The first run back, I could feel it. And they say stress fractures of this, in this spot, it's more on the inside. They say they take about six to eight weeks. And I only gave it like three and a half. So there you go. So it's, it's, it's lingered. I've done some runs since the half marathon, obviously. And uh, it's gotten a little worse to where it would wake me up middle of the night. I'd be in a, you know, dead asleep and it would wake me up just this pulsating pain radiating in from, a, from the bone. There's this spot on the bone where the stress fracture is in my ankle and it would just be like emanating and it was so painful. I'd have to wake up, take some ibuprofen, ice it, go back to bed. So I'm like, this, this thing's not getting any better. I was hoping I could just run through it, power through, um, and it wasn't improving. And I had to come to terms with the fact that I was going to have to take a six week break. And I'm at that point now where I'm like, if I just stay off it as far as running until Valentine's Day, that might do the trick. And it's disheartening to have to take that time off when I have a 100 mile race in the mountains looming over me, the Bighorn 100 in June. And I know the clock is ticking, but it gave me the opportunity to approach things with a different mindset. And this is how I can relate this to you. So instead of getting too down about, man, I can't run, I, I, my mind went to a place where I was like, what are all the things I can do? What are all the things I can do in place of, of running to stay in shape, to, to better myself? And I had some New Year's goals, which I talked about in a video a week ago. And I was like, I can take this time to put these things into practice. And I'm coming out with a 12 week uh, deadlift PR ebook slash uh, training cycle that I'm gonna release. I put a lot of work in, it's super involved. And I started running my plan basically. And uh, I'm like, you know, in 12 weeks, I could try to hit that 683 deadlift, which was my goal for the year. I was like, why not? Let's get aggressive. Let's shift our mindset a little. Let's try to get the 683 deadlift. And even if I fall short, my deadlift will have improved by great magnitude. So let's gun for that. You know, let's gun for a big bench. I, the goal for the year was 353. I don't know if I'll get there obviously as well, but let's try to chip away at that. And I'm like, I can focus on these and I can focus on for my cardio. I can do uh, max incline treadmill fast walking. So today I did an hour 
at a 15 degree grade, which is the, the max incline for the treadmill at 3.4 miles an hour. And that sounds slow as heck, but at a 15 degree grade, it's brutal. And I was sweating like crazy. And I feel like that will help me maintain a lot of my shape because I did find with this stress fracture that a lot of incline running at like 10 degree grade really kept me in a ridiculous shape. So I went outside to do a run the other day and I was just flying. I was, it was incredibly fast run, one of my best runs, top three of the last year. So I realized I'm like, well, the incline treadmill is gonna be the ticket. That's gonna keep me in ridiculous shape and it takes a lot of impact off the ankle. So I was like, if I just walk and put it at the max grade, I could do that to stay in shape, get the zone two, three cardio and, and keep my, my keep that going basically. And I can clean up my diet a little bit and get, you know, lean down even more. And right now I'm like 205 and I can focus on these lifts and I can just focus on being a better all around athlete. And that might help me come race day in this ultra marathon, this hundred miler in the mountains where no doubt my will is going to be tested. My mental capacity is going to be tested. There will be moments I'm sure over the course of that, where I'll want to just literally break down and cry, where I'll want to give up, where everything will hurt. Well, I'll have no energy. I'll probably throw up or, you know, all these things are going to go wrong. I'm sure at some point and I need to prepare for that. And that's no different than a lot of you guys with lifting or with life goals. There are things that are going to come up. I see them with my clients. I see them with everybody. Obviously, we try to prevent this stuff. We try to prevent injuries. We try to keep people healthy. It's part of the game. It's part of paying your dues. Nobody gets to the top in anything without paying their dues. So if you want to be one of the strongest guys out there, you got to pay your dues. You're going to get injured. It's part of the game. Don't dwell on it. Don't get mad. You know, it's okay to some extent. Obviously, that's human. Don't let it defeat you. You have to keep going. You have to find another way. What's the way around it? Like, you think I want to not run? I want to run. Running sucks. Running's hard. But I want to run for the purpose of this goal pursuit that the Lord has put me on this path to do. You know, and I can't do that right now with this with this injury. This, this stress fracture hurts like heck. Um, the impact. But I found other things I can do. I can pivot around it. I can, there's no excuse to get out of shape right now. I can maintain my, the cardiovascular shape I'm in. I can push my lifts, my deadlift, my bench, all these lifts that I'm after. I started squatting again. You know, big things. It's like you can reframe your mindset, reframe your perspective, work around these things and get to the top. And that's the kind of mindset I want you guys to adapt. If you want to be better, this is what you have to do. It's not about, you can't just quit. Grind away one day at a time. Find an alternate path. And so that's the message I want to relate to you guys. If you got something from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It, it does help the channel. I really want to push the channel in the new year. I have, uh, like I said, the ebook coming out that I put a tremendous amount of work into, and I will be uh, I will be offering that shortly as I'm just finalizing things. And I feel extremely confident about that. It's the 12 weeks to a deadlift PR program slash ebook and. I think it's excellent. So I will be on the lookout for that. Appreciate you guys watching.